DxO just released Photo Lab version 9 and it's packed with features. Some of them won't change how you edit your photography, they'll just make things easier. But a few are real game changers. In this video, I'll reveal the ones that could completely transform your editing workflow. Let's face it, more and more photographers, myself included, are using their iPhones to take photos. Take this photo from Whitby as an example. It was shot on an iPhone 15 Pro and it's in the HEC format, which is used by iPhones. In the past, I couldn't edit images like this in Photolab without first converting them to another format. The good news is that Photolab 9 now fully supports the HEC format for iPhones. What I like about this is that it gives me access to Photolab's excellent colour renderings. That makes a big difference to the results I can achieve. Although I use my iPhone a lot for photography, I've never been a fan of the Mac Photo or Adobe Colours when editing them. If I reset this image, you can see what came out of the Mac Photo Editor. There's something about this that I just don't like. But with Photolab, I seem to be able to achieve much better results and get the look that I want. And if I want to push things in a more creative direction, I can do that too. Look at the original of this image. The iPhone's heck file looks flat and it doesn't have any mood. But with Photolab, the same photo has depth, richness and life. But it's not just the heck files that are now supported. Photolab 9 also handles Apple's Pro Raw format. I've processed a few Pro Raw images now, and I absolutely love the results that come out of Photolab, especially when I combine them with the Nick Collection tools for finishing. Now let's change direction, as I know not everyone watching this will be using an iPhone for their photographer. There is another new feature in Photolab 9 that I believe is a real game changer. Before we get to the next feature, I want to mention something for the Fuji photographers watching. If we look at this Fuji RAW file, you'll see I can select the Deep Prime XD3, but notice the beta badge is gone. This is now in full release, and it makes a perfect link into our next game changing feature. In this photo, about two thirds of the frame is sky. The rest has a lot of fine detail. Ideally, I want to apply a low level of deep prime noise reduction across the whole image, but then add extra adjustments to the lower part of the image. It's the same with the lens sharpness optimization. We don't want to risk sharpening the clouds, making them look unnatural. So here's what I'll do. I'll start by reducing the luminance noise reduction to around 15. I'll also drop the force detail setting all the way down to minus 100, which is the minimum value. This should render the clouds as naturally as possible while minimizing noise. If we now inspect them using the loop at 200%, you can see they look smooth, clean and natural. But there's a problem. The foreground in the image now appears a little too soft and lacking detail. To begin to fix this, I'll switch on the lens sharpness optimization. Straight away, the waves and the beach look sharper. But this is having a sharpening effect on the clouds. To avoid that, I'll reduce the intensity and detail sliders, lowering the effect to an acceptable level. The trouble is, that leaves the lower part of the image looking softer than I would like. And this is exactly where the next game changing feature comes in. Let's switch to the local adjustments panel so I can show you. First, I'll click on the graduated filter to activate it. Then I'll drag it over the lower area of the image where the detail is. As I do this, you can see the red overlay appears showing the selection. Now with that in place, I can make adjustments using the panel on the right. And here's the new part. If we scroll down, you'll see the same controls I was using globally, but this time they're applied just to the selection. Let's check the results using the loop again. I'll start now by increasing the force detail slider to a value of around 70. That brings out more fine details straight away. Next, I'll increase the luminance slider to 40. That keeps the noise under control in this area. And finally, I'll push the lens sharpness optimization up to 100. That's the usual default when applied globally. Now, if I toggle the local adjustments off and then on, you can see the effect they're having. In the earlier version of Photolab, 
you could already sharpen and blur local areas of the image. But being able to apply the denoising and demosaicing locally takes the quality to a new level. When I first saw a similar feature in DXO Puro, I wasn't convinced by it. I couldn't see the point. But now having used it in Photolab 9, I'm a strong convert. If you're quality conscious like me, these tools will be a huge help in your processing. And yet, there's something even more exciting in this release. For this next feature, I'll switch to a photo of a sea eagle I recently captured. I like the shot, but the eagle doesn't stand out enough from the background. The colours of the bird and its surroundings are just too similar. In the past, I'd try to fix this with a local adjustment. And while that would work, getting a good result isn't always easy. That's why this new release of Photolab 9 is so exciting. We have a brand new AI selection tool. When I click the AI mask icon, Photolab analyzes the image. And I have three different modes I can use to select the eagle. You can switch between these modes using the icons along the bottom of the screen. The first is an object selection mode, which has two icons. With this active, I just move my mouse pointer over the image. Photolab then automatically detects objects and highlights them with a red mask. A single click then selects the object. The second icon here lets you subtract an object or even part of an object from an existing selection. The second option is an area selection mode. Here you can simply click and drag to draw a rectangle around the subject. Photolab then identifies and selects it automatically. And, just like with the object selection tool, there's also an option to deselect an area. The final mode is a predefined selection. When I hover the mouse pointer over subject item in the list, it's highlighted. And when I get to animals, I can use it to select the sea eagle and fish together. Having three different modes means that you can choose whichever one works best for your photo. For this example, I'll use the object selection to isolate the eagle. Once it's selected, I can start refining the image. I can open the shadow of the bird's body, then I can tweak the sharpness and detail sliders to emphasize the feathers. If we zoom in with the loop tool at 200% and check the eagle's head, you can see the quality is excellent. I think this is a great shot considering it was taken from a small boat on a micro four thirds camera at ISO 400. Overall, the AI tools are impressive. They're usually very accurate and they make what used to be a fiddly job much easier. But there's still one last feature I want to show you. And for me, this one is the best one of all. This next feature is all about the ability to combine selections created with different tools all under the same mask. In earlier versions of Photolab, we weren't able to do this and it would become confusing. But in Photolab 9, the selection tools now work together in a much more logical way. And this has completely transformed how I use local adjustments. Let me show you an example. I already have a mask created for this image, which I used earlier to select the sea eagle. I'll rename that mask so it's easier to recognize. Now let's say that I want to blur the background behind the eagle. To do this, I first need to add a new mask by clicking the new mask icon. That step's important because the adjustments we apply are attached to the mask itself. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. For the background selection, I'll use a graduated filter. I'll click and drag on the area that I want to target. Then when I release the mouse button, you can see the red overlay showing the selection. And in the panel, under the new mask, we now see the graduated filter listed. I'll rename this mask as background, so it's clear what it does. Now, notice what happens when I switch between the sea eagle mask and the background mask. The adjustment controls change each time because they're tied directly to that mask. That means I can use completely different settings for each one. But here's the problem. The graduated filter also includes the sea eagle, and I don't want that. To fix it, I can use the new AI mask tool. With the background mask still active, I can switch to the AI mask and use the subtract option mode. Then I'll simply click on the eagle. Straight away, you can see the shape of the bird is now cut out from the graduated filter selection. 
And here's the clever part. Even though I've used two different tools, a graduated filter and an AI mask, they both sit under the same mask. They can bind together seamlessly. For me, this is a genuine game-changing feature. I can even rename the selections to keep things organized. I'll call the AI mask Remove Sea Eagle and append Select Background to the graduated filter. Now we can apply the adjustments to the background. I'll add a little bit of extra blur and reduce the force detail slider down to 100. This makes the Sea Eagle pop out more strongly against the background. And it doesn't stop there. If I select the graduated filter again, I can now move or reposition it. I can adjust the gradient to make the effect look more natural. And all the time I do this, the eagle is still being excluded automatically from the selection. This is exactly how I want to see the local adjustment tools working. So, those are the features that for me are the genuine game changers in this release of Photo Lab 9. iPhone support, local deep prime adjustments, AI selections, and the ability to combine selections. Of course, there are other features that you'll probably find useful. For example, the new stacking option in the photo library, or the project groups which allow projects to be organised into hierarchies. I haven't covered everything here in this release, only the things that I think are the real game changers for my photo editing. But I'm sure you're asking yourself, how much does it cost? Well, the full elite version of Photo Lab 9, which is what I've been using, is priced at $239.99 and the same in euros. If you're in the UK, it's £219.99. If you already own Photo Lab 7 or 8, there is an upgrade license available. That's priced at $119.99 and the same in euros, or in the UK, it's £109.99. I've been using the beta version of Photo Lab 9 for the past couple of weeks now. And I'll definitely be upgrading my Photo Lab 8 license. The results have been excellent, especially when combined with the Nick Collection 8, which I review in this video. If you don't already use the Nick Collection, it's well worth taking a look at. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you found the video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe here and on my website. I'll see you soon for another video.